Daryl Castle is our next speaker, and Daryl is one that you all know well, but I'm going to give him a fitting introduction anyway. He, of course, is the national vice chairman of the party. He was the Constitution Party's 2008 vice presidential nominee. He's an attorney in private practice with firms in Memphis, Tennessee, St. Louis, Missouri, and Kansas City, Missouri. Got both ends of the state covered. After graduation from college, Darrell was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps and is a combat veteran of the Vietnam War. Darrell trained under then first lieutenant Oliver North. After graduation from uh, basic school, Darrell's unit received a unit citation for being deployed in five different theaters of operation at the same time. He was promoted to first lieutenant and received orders to the Far East for 13 months. Darrell left the Marine Corps in 1974, a very different person than he was when he went in. It was a life-changing event, and his experience during those years has contributed to his strong belief that war, excuse me, that war should not be entered into capriciously, and a decision to go to war must be made according to constitutional provisions. Darrell firmly believes we must uphold Article I, Section 8 of the Constitution, which makes it clear that only Congress can declare war, that those powers are not granted to the President. Darrell served two terms as Constitution Party of Tennessee State Chairman, is serving his third term as Vice Chairman of the National Committee, and two terms as the uh, Platform Committee, the Chairman for the National Convention. Darrell has taught the Institute in the Constitution course and written articles and commentaries ad addressing national issues and analysis of uh, current events. Since 2005, Darrell has served on the board of the Conservative Caucus. He served as chairman of the National Veterans Coalition and outreach of the National Constitution Party in 2007. In 1998, he and his wife Joan founded Mia's Children Foundation, Inc., a Christian mission in Bucharest, Romania, which ministers to homeless gypsy children. <clears throat> Darrell and his wife Joan have been married for 31 years. They live in Germantown, Tennessee. Their daughter Joanna and her su husband serve with na the uh, Navigators Ministry at uh, uh, Cornell University. I think this is a little out of the date. I think they're actually uh, now in New York City, but uh, serving nevertheless with the uh, Navigators. So let's welcome Daryl Castle. speaker in a long event like this on one side but on the other side uh, it's a bad thing because people are tired people go home uh, so I appreciate you being here and you uh, listening to us today all the speakers I'm sure feel the same way now this morning Shalene uh, not only quoted the Beatles but actually sang a Beatles song I'm not going to sing for you today don't worry uh, but I am going to quote one of my favorite philosophers, Jim Morrison. <laughs> Morrison said, we have the things that are known and the things that are unknown. And in between are the doors, the doors of perception. And we, those doors right now, the end quote, by the way, those doors are barely open for us today, the doors of perception. And so... Uh, if we search for the truth and we really uh, dedicate ourselves to finding it, it's not that difficult to find uh, if we truly intend to find it. And the reality is that the truth is far easier to put forward than a lie because you don't have to manufacture any evidence to do it. You just set it out as you perceive it. But uh, I will confess to you that I don't know the future. God knows the future, but I don't. But I do know something about the past because I've lived through 61 years of it personally. Uh, so it's the past that we examine today, this thing in my topic, as you'll see from your agenda, uh, Vietnam and Afghanistan. Why revisit 
Vietnam after so many years? Well, because, uh, number one, the truth is important. It's worth pursuing. Number two, we left so much blood and treasure there uh, that it's important to know. And number three, uh, we're doing it again in Afghanistan. Here we go again. That could be the second title of this speech. There are many differences, but there are many similarities too. Now, uh, Vietnam, when I was a young officer, in my bio you heard, uh, I went to uh, the Marine, what the Marine Corps calls the basic school. It's just where they train uh, beginning officers in infantry, tactics, things of that nature. Everybody has to do it. But we had a class called Professional Reading. And one of the books that was required reading in this class was uh, Bernard Falls, Hell in a Very Small Place, the Battle of Dien Bien Phu. This battle was one of the seminal moments in, uh, in the history of the world, really, because it ended uh, the imperialistic nature of one of the uh, uh, of history's all-time uh, uh, empires and imperialist nations, France. France, having invaded that country uh, in 1857 and colonized Vietnam, uh, and for 80 consecutive years oppressed those people, as colonial powers do, uh, by uh, uh, using their natural resources, starving the people, uh, primarily by causing them to, to convert their rice crops into crops that could be exported for profit, uh, about 2 million people starved to death there during World War II. France was eventually evicted from that country in, in uh, 1937 by the Japanese. All this time, uh, a name you're very familiar with, I'm sure, Ho Chi Minh, was in Europe, having been uh, uh, kicked out of his own country by the French 30 years before that. But he continued a struggle to free his country from colonial oppression. He saw it as independence and unification. I don't talk, I don't mean freedom in the sense that we know it, for he was a communist. He was, uh, he, he formed the French Communist Party until it was banned by the Nazis uh, during their visit to France in 1939. But he was also trained in Moscow and in China in tactics, but his entire life was dedicated to uh, driving foreigners out of his country and to unifying it. At the end of World War II, uh, Vietnam was divided uh, in, at the 16th parallel in an effort to disarm the Japanese. The British in the South and the Chinese in the North were given this task of disarming the remaining Japanese. Well, Ho Chi Minh assumed that uh, uh, his country would be free, that it would be united eventually, and it would be free. 